Good morning. Good morning and blessings wherever you are. I'm thinking of you right now. I'm thinking about you in your kitchens or in your living rooms, and you're maybe in Roxbury here, or maybe you're in Florida, or maybe you're somewhere in between. We just, I'm thinking you for, of you all over the place. And maybe there are kids with you, and maybe there are pets with you, maybe you're by yourself. In all those situations, what I'm really thinking is thank God for you. Thank God for the children of God who are gathered together at this place now, ready to hear God speak through music, through scripture, and through preaching. Jesus makes a promise today in this scripture lesson. He makes a promise that his father is going to send another advocate. An advocate. Wouldn't that be nice if we all had an advocate, someone who spoke up for us? And this particular advocate that he's promising his father is sending is one that always tells the truth. Wow, what a gift. So listen today for this gift of the one who tells the truth. And now, preparing ourselves for worship, let us welcome Jesus among us. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, We We confess confess that that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to have a children's message brought to us by our own Scott Bellows. <laughs> and now a children's message brought to us by Mr. Bellows. Will he be in his neighborhood? We'll see. Good morning, boys and girls and children of all ages, and welcome to another sermonette by Mr. Bellows. Today's sermonette deals with the gospel lesson, which talks of how Jesus was talking with his disciples. Jesus was telling his disciples that he wouldn't be with him much longer, and that was making the disciples very sad and scared. But then Jesus told the disciples that he would send his spirit down to comfort them and that he would always be with them and love them. So now, what does comfort mean? Well, comfort is when we're trying to cheer somebody up by either our acts or our words and make them feel better because they're sad or scared. Now we can do this in a couple of different ways. Now, when my kids were little, we would go on trips and we go on car rides and plane rides and they would have a favorite stuffed animal or a toy or an item that they would bring with them that would bring them comfort and make them feel better. Now my oldest daughter Jessica had this little guy right here and she named him Lion. Lion Jesse would always take Lion to bed with her and he would help Jesse fall asleep no matter where she was. And my next daughter, Jillian, had this well-used guy here and called Sleepy Eyes. Now this is the original Sleepy Eyes with his eyes are wide open, so I'm not sure why they call him Sleepy Eyes. But this is Sleepy Eyes second body here because he was so used and went through the washer and Jillian would take him everywhere. Sleepy Eyes has been on car rides, on plane rides, on boat rides. Sleepy Eyes has been to Disney and Hershey Park and even the Grand Canyon. Now Sleepy Eyes would always make Jillian feel better and Jillian loved Sleepy Eyes so, so much and was always a huge source of comfort to Jillian. And then finally, my youngest daughter, Jamie, had this blankie. And Jamie again would bring Blanky everywhere on the car rides, airplanes. But my favorite main memory with Jamie was taking her in the car and I'd look back, I'd be driving and I would look in the rear view mirror and I could see Jamie sitting in her car seat, fast asleep, holding Blanky. That would comfort me also. But I have to say that my source of comfort is this big old guy that I'm sitting in right here named Lazy Boy. Lazy Boy always makes me feel better. Now I can't take Lazy Boy with me because he's so big, but if I have a hard day or if I'm feeling sad and missing my girls, I just snuggle up with my old pal here and we'll put the girls and watch their videos on TV or see where they were with their pictures or, and I just feel so much better. Now, what is your source of comfort? When I get back to church, I'm gonna ask you, cause I would love to hear what makes all of you feel better or what your favorite toy is that you take everywhere. Now, I know these times they're still a little scary 
and that we can't go see everybody and we can't have play dates with our friends and we can't see grandma and grandpa as much as we would like to, but we can always send them cards or call them on the phone and tell them how much we love them and miss them and that will bring them comfort. All right, boys and girls, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the words of Jesus. Thank you for the comfort of his spirit. Thank you for sending him into the world and for him loving us so much. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. The reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that, when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I am an orphan. In the most literal sense of that word. The Greek is orphanos without parents, literally. If we live long enough, most of us will become one. My mom died in 2003 after 10 years of health problems. Her death was not a surprise. My dad died less than two years later, and that was a surprise. I expected him to be around for a long time. When my siblings gathered for the funeral, one of them said, I guess we're orphans now. And I guess we were. Without parents. I was 40 years old. I had been living independently at that point 
for the better part of 20 years. I was well established in all the usual adult ways, a young family, a home, all of the responsibilities that come along with that. But still, the realization that my parents were gone really hit me. The people who brought me into this world, who nurtured me, provided for me, protected me, they were not there anymore. Them being there wasn't something I had thought that much about. You take your parents for granted, at least I did then. The fact that they were there matters like some sort of gravitational pull that you don't have to think about for it to exert its influence on you, to hold you in a steady orbit. And deep down, you know that there will always be a place for you. When you really need them, they will be there for you. Well, until they're not. And you touch on that terrifying realization even as an adult, that ultimately you are alone in the world. These days it feels that we are touching more and more on that realization. When things are going well, we don't think about this existential reality. We are too busy with all of the many things going on, our families, our kids, the activities, all of the events, the projects, and the meetings, the business of life. But when crisis comes, when the rug gets pulled out from under us, when uncertainty and fear take over, when the systems and structures that we've come to count on begin to teeter, we come in close contact with that sense of dread. Who will be there to catch me? These days, that feeling can come in the strangest of places. An empty shelf at the grocery store when you're reaching for something, some ordinary thing that's always there, a bag of flour or a roll of toilet paper. And now that empty space symbolizes that something is unsteady. Something is gone. Something that you have come to count on is no longer sure. Our challenge these days is much more than simply how do we endure this lockdown. These days we are all confronting our vulnerability. When the air seems unfit to breathe, when every human encounter seems dangerous, when systems begin to fail, we feel very alone in a very scary world. But Jesus tells his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's how last week's gospel began, and this is a continuation of it today. He was telling his disciples this as he prepared them for his departure, what they would surely see as their orphanhood, his betrayal and death. The disciples had been following Jesus for years. They were part of this movement, this emerging kingdom. And Jesus was the heartbeat at the very center of what God was doing. What do you mean you're going away? Where are you going? We don't know the way to the place you are going. We don't know. We don't know how to get there ourselves. But Jesus says to them, I will not leave you orphaned. It only seems that I am leaving you. It only seems that I will no longer be with you. But the truth is, and you will find this hard to believe at times. I am leaving this mode of existence in order to become even more present with you, more alive to you, and literally inside of you. 
In these latter Sundays of the season of Easter, we begin this transition from Jesus' resurrection to his abiding presence in the Holy Spirit. He will not leave you orphaned. He will not abandon you to face the challenges of life alone. Don't let your hearts be troubled. We are not orphans. But it's easy to think that we are. And that's probably why the command, do not be afraid, is the most often repeated command in all of the scriptures. Don't be afraid. We live by faith, but our faith is not perfect. And most of the time, our faith is not particularly strong. And when we feel threatened, our animal brains take over, and it seems impossible for us to rest in that unseen presence that promises to always be with us. It's telling to consider the names that Jesus gives this gift of his presence. Advocate, helper, comforter, counselor. These strike me not so much as overpowering God in God's splendor images. These are gentle, quiet voices. This still, small voice, if we listen close, the voice of this advocate within you that says, I've got you. You are not alone. The God who holds all creation holds you. Yes, you who worry about the next day, the next month, the next year. You who don't know how much longer you can go without that sense of normal that we all took so much for granted. You who are tired of Zoom meetings, tired of TV, tired of puzzles, tired of uncertainty, just plain tired. You scared, lonely, desperate you. To that you, this voice says today, let not your hearts be troubled. I have not left you to be an orphan. I am with you always. May the God who promises to abide with us always, may this God in Christ Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you and give you comfort and peace this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the light. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. Is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? Stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours Praise the one who saved.
Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. You call, <clears throat> you call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to the power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially now during the unpredictability of the global pandemic we are currently experiencing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. Remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray 
into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I'm so confused. I know I heard you loud and clear, so I followed through. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a word or two about the things that God is doing here at Redeemer through us all. I hope you've had a chance to read of our doings as we, this family of Jesus in this place, um, continue to post them for you in uh, something we're now calling the Redeemer Weekly, or you can find them on the web page. Please, if you're not receiving that, if you um, don't get a Wednesday announcement of things going on at Redeemer, please reach out and let us know that, um, and we will for sure add you to that mailing list. Do take a moment, too, to note the opportunities for children and youth mostly to gather on Sundays. There's Sunday school in the morning, social group gatherings for all ages. So please check the website or the Redeemer Weekly for those and times and the links to them. And this is a surprise to her, but way to go, Sharon. Uh, Redeemer's own Sharon Baker was just named Roxbury School District's Educator of the Year. So um, if you didn't know, Deacon Sharon is a English teacher at Roxbury High School and is a blessing to the staff and students there as well as to her Redeemer family. Thanks. Yay, Sharon. Um, please, finally, you knew I had to say it, uh, keep your offerings coming. Like all of us individual families at this time, we have bills to pay as the people of Redeemer, and it's becoming difficult. So if you can help in any way, please do. If you can keep up with your pledge, that would be wonderful. Um, just know that such things can be mailed into the church, dropped off at the church, or uh, you can go online to find out how to give electronically. Other things that I have forgotten? Hearing none from the whole congregation gathered here, then let us prepare to receive God's blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Oh, 
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.